Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you today. I'm getting a lot of requests to see our chicken coop that we have divided. So I'm gonna go through this with you. I have a Welsomer that's inside and she's very chatty. So I'm gonna do my best to get this footage for you. We've already tried this one time. Can't predict those roosters or hens. They're gonna do what they wanna do. So I've given them some treats to kind of tempt them into uh, a little bit of silence. So it's snowing and we wanted to get this project underway as quick as possible because our silkies are growing rapidly. So this building was bought when we first moved here, okay? I did not want to buy a standard chicken coop. For the money, I got a larger building with windows and more options. That way it allowed me to transform what, you know, whatever it's going to be used for, I can transform it, you know, transform it to the needs at the time. Well, now we need it back as a chicken coop. It's been our chicken coop and it was our duck house and now it is a full chicken coop again. We are uh, on one side housing Welsomers and cream leg bars. We want the blue eggs and we want to create olive eggers. That's the reason the Welsomers are going to be trans transferred over here uh, with Vanderbilt, the <laughs> gorgeous uh, rooster. Only one rooster in this house in terms of the cream leg bar, okay? This is his place and his girls. So on the other side, however, we have put our silkies, but we needed to build a barrier. So let's take you in and show you because it's quite chilly. Now, if this well summer talks a lot, y'all just gonna have to deal with it. Okay. So, I just opened the door. On this side, which is a solid um, size for a good flock of chickens, um, the entire length of this, if I'm not mistaken, is 12 by eight. I'm pretty sure this is a 12 by eight. So I have put down some treats right now. So originally without the division that you're seeing right here, all the chickens or ducks would go out through this door that has a latch and lock that I lock every night to go out to the large run. No brainer. Well, we're gonna have to recreate that on the other side, but we're not there yet. So this is how I manage my chickens with my chicken coop. They go out to the large run over here. The other side is the duck house and the duck pen. And when they come in to roost at night, I simply lock this door, okay? You need to lock them up at night. That's how to help keep predator proof with any of your chickens, whether it's a coop or a barn, okay? They'll, they're pretty good at coming in on their own. Uh, right now, all of my chickens are putting themselves up around 5 p.m., which is long before dark now and they start to relax and roost, and we simply come out and lock it up. I typically, okay, that's enough of that. I typically do not keep water and feed in here, but I gave them some treats to give them to keep them busy, which she's not taking the bait. Um, and the water I've kept in here just because it's so cold. So we're gonna be rotating waters all day long, okay? That's what we do. It's easier than keeping a water heater. I really don't like those. So uh, I've had uh, my own experiences with those. I would prefer to lug waters a couple of times each day. I don't want to take a chance with electricity right now. Um, just, it's a hassle for me. So do what you need to do for your farm. That's what I prefer. Of course, we had the nesting box. We had the perch for right now. But we can add whatever we need to when we prefer to. That's the deal. That's what we like. On this side, I have built an entire separation. Actually, my husband did and my son. I helped a little bit. Simply, we used two by fours, guys. Nail guns, we measured it out. We framed in the area, we framed in the door, and this is where we have our silkies, okay? Pretty much the same thing on the other side, except I do not have a door going out yet. We will in the spring, okay? They will be able to go out on the other side, just like these guys go out over here, um, we're creating their own special run. We're just not there yet, but you can see they've got plenty of space over here. They're very happy. We got lots of straw. Up here are the windows that are, you know, open. So this is what the coop is looking like at the time. Okay, so this is what we've done. I will tell you that I have found this building to be extremely useful. Um, buildings like this, if you can build one yourself, you're even more handy dandy than, than I am. Um, but you can always find these at different places. A lot of times they sell them used. Um, and you know, you could use this for goats. You could use this for chickens or ducks. 
just whatever you need. It gives you a lot of options. So if we ever change our mind, we can take down the framing that we've built in here with ease and we've opened up the whole structure again, okay? So this is what it looks like and this is how we have continued to add to the farm. Another reason why it is really nice to have separation like this, which I will probably keep up, is because you're gonna have great options in terms of broody mamas, keeping your breeds separate. Um, injured hens, you know, if you don't have a lot of hens, but, um, or you know, a large flock, but you build a separation, it's going to be a great option for a grow out stall, injured hens or injured roosters, or just keeping, you know, keeping things separate in general. So this is what we're looking like. We appreciate you watching. I hope this helped you out and uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I'm finally going to get a late breakfast today. We've been working really hard. Y'all stay warm and well out there and we will talk to you soon. Say goodbye, Miss Victoria.